Hello there. Welcome back to the Chaps Guide. My name is Ash and of course I'm your host on this journey through men's style, self-development and personal grooming. Now I have been a fan of the quintessential desert boot for more than 30 years. I can always remember having a pair of desert boots in my shoe or boot collection. And there's good reason for that. You know, the desert boot is a rugged, go anywhere, do anything boot, which is really flexible when it comes to the way that you incorporate it into your style. Because unusually for a boot, it can be worn with shorts. Um, you can wear it with jeans. You can wear it with slacks on occasion. There's so many situations where the desert boot is going to be a comfortable yet stylish accompaniment to your clothing. And for so many years, all of those years I've just talked about, my boot of choice has always been the Clark's Original Desert Boot. I mean, this is my current pair of boots, which I've probably had for three or four years now, but I've had a Clark's Desert Boot in my collection stretching back many, many years. But in recent times, I have to admit, as I've got older, I've been thinking more about the origins of the clothing that I wear. I like to try and support um, manufacturers from my own country, whilst always, of course, chasing good value for money and the best quality that I can achieve for the price point which I'm prepared to pay. And with that regard, I've been thinking about the Clark's Desert Boot. This you know, perennial item in my collection. Because the Clark's Desert Boot, this particular pair, despite being the most British of footwear, you know, its origin story, you know, takes us back to the Second World War where um, Nathan Clark, member of the Clark's Empire here in this country, they were fighting in Burma and the Western Desert, and he uh, recognized that these boots were being worn by soldiers in place of their issued boots because they were more practical and appropriate for that theater of combat operations. He famously brought a few pairs back and the company took them into production. So this association with Britishness is very big within the Clark's brand. However, this actual pair manufactured in Vietnam, thousands of miles away. So even though they trade upon their Britishness, you know, they called the original Clark's Desert Boot, actually they're made in a foreign land thousands and thousands of miles away. So that is somewhat disingenuous to me personally as a consumer. And you know, they retail at 130 British pounds, which is a fair amount of money for a very simple boot. So I thought to myself, could I do better? Could I find a better boot manufactured in my own country at around the same orbit of price? And I think I have. Now I can thank one of my viewers for bringing this brand to my attention because in a previous video where I've talked about desert boots, somebody wrote to me in the comments and said, have you heard of Jad footwear? Now Jad, J-A-D-D, -D, um, is an entirely British company. They, uh, their base is in the Rendlesham Forest in Suffolk and they've been in operation since 1998. And it is fair to say they have become specialists in the manufacture of desert boots. And I titled this video The Ultimate Desert Boot. I think we may have found it. I think we may have found it in this product that I have here on the table. Because Jad Footwear, um, as I say, been around for a long time, they specialize in a certain type of manufacturing of footwear called uh, the stitch down method, whereby, you know, it's just a, a method of connecting the sole to the upper. And this requires a lot of skill, a lot of knowledge. They've become the experts in this field. So much so, but for many years, they've been producing footwear for other brands and manufacturers. However, they took their own identity, Jad Footwear, and they produced the boots which I have here on the table today. What I particularly like about Jad Footwear, and in keeping with what I'm talking about today, making it local, making it British, making it excellent, what they have here is a boot for which they proudly declare Every stitch, every cut, every element in the production process of this boot was done here in the United Kingdom. 
They've been making desert boots for 15 years. And as I say, under their own name and also assisting other brands with the manufacture of their footwear as well. So it is, I think it is fair to say, you know, these are experts in the field of the production of these boots. And every piece of this boot has been made in-house in the United Kingdom. Now, don't be worried if you live elsewhere in the world because they do ship worldwide. So let's talk about this boot and why I think I have found the apex of the desert boot world, the ultimate desert boot. So I think to appreciate the boot and why I've kind of fallen in love with these, I think we need to understand the manufacturing process. And it begins with the material, of course. Now, Jad used the best full grain leathers from around the world. The particular pair that you see today are made of Horween Chrome XL leather. That was my choice, but there are many different uh, suede and things like that that you can purchase uh, your boots in. Uh, and once they have the material, then it goes into the clicking process. Now, clicking is the term used for cutting out the leather into the shapes that we will see creating our boot. Clicking is called that because the, the, the knives and the cutting process use, uh, creates a clicking sound. Uh, and in, if you went into a, a factory making footwear, you'd hear this customary clicking sound. Within JAD, there's no automation used here. These are clicked by hand. So once they have all of the various elements clicked out, ready to go, then we go into the closing stage. Now this is where the pieces which have been created in that clicking process um, are sewn together to form the upper that we see here today. And that's done on machines by hand. So it's hand sewn using a machine of course uh, and you know a great deal of skill, a great deal of knowledge and acquired capability is needed in the production of a pair of shoes in that way. Now, whilst all of the closing is done, everything is sewn together, then we get to the lasting phase. Now, this is where the boot takes its shape. It's um, formed around a plastic last, which is the shape of one's foot. And again, there's a lot of human element involved here. It's all done by the eye. There's no automation. Although machines are used in the process, the, the, the sort of situationing of the boots in the machinery is very much the skill, and it's all done by eye. Then when it's lasted, the stitching, as you can imagine, is where the upper is now ready, and it's um, sewn to the midsole, the bit which will go between the sole and the upper. Very important part. This is where that stitch down uh, capability um, process is used, which means that you know if, if one of the stitches comes undone, it's not going to unravel because of the lockdown stitches which are used. It makes the boot very practical, very utilitarian. Now we come to the sole laying phase. This is important because the sole, as we all know, is where the rubber meets the road. And the beauty of buying from a relatively small batch manufacturer like Jad is that you get to have a greater element of choice in what sole you have on your boot, perhaps than any other manufacturer I've encountered that isn't bespoke or a custom manufacturer. Because Jad gives you the option of a whole number of different soles. Now, I've personally, because I'm looking for a very, you know, standard desert boot, I've gone for the natural crepe sole. For me, this is what I visualize as a desert boot when I think of a desert boot. However, there's a number of choices. If you don't like the natural crepe, and of course, crepe is a coagulated latex product, which has many positive qualities, but you can choose not to have the natural one color. You can either have it in a darker brown or a black. So, you know, obviously dye is introduced to the process. If that's something you feel which is more appropriate to your style, or you can have a Vibram sole, or you can have a day night sole, or you can even have a commando sole. There's a great deal of choice. I mean, you know, that is an amazing selection, really, that you can stipulate with your boots from the get-go. You won't find that in many places, if anywhere, I think. Um, and what do I like? Why have I chosen crepe? Well, for me, crepe is the perfect utilitarian material for a boot that I want to wear every day in pretty much any casual situation. Because crepe, it's naturally 
shock absorbing, all right? I've walked around in these boots day after day, and of course, the rubber, which is effectively what crepe is, very soft and it's very yielding. As the temperatures rise in the summer months, crepe becomes even more um, spongy-like, and it gives you that shock, shock absorption to your foot as you walk along. Really reduces foot fatigue on a day-to-day -day basis. So wonderful, wonderful stuff. Not great in the winter though, because one of the negatives to crepe is that if you're talking about very sheer, maybe soft or slippery surfaces, you know, icy for instance, they don't offer a great deal of traction. Fabulous traction in the summer months and in perhaps autumn and spring when it's warmer, but winter, for me, these go away in the winter. They're a three season boot. If you want a four season boot, choose them on day night or Vibram and you've got a boot you can wear pretty much all the time. Great advantage. And another immense advantage, I have to say, of buying your boot from a small manufacturer like Jad is the simple fact you can send it back to the factory after that sole is worn out and get it easily and modestly priced repaired. At the moment, when I film this, um, Jad offer a sole replacement for uh, service for £55 carried out in the factory. Now I think that's very reasonable. It's about a you know a quarter of the price of these boots. I'll tell you right now the boot costs around uh, well this particular pair costs £199 in this specification. There are cheaper models available but I think you know a brand new sole every what three four five years whatever it is when you wear them out it's like having a brand new pair of boots for a fraction of the price and you've got sustainability. You know, you're, you're maintaining the same pair of boots. You're not throwing them away and buying new. The boots are not going into landfill. You're doing good for the world in which we live. You're using natural products, which are, you know, put together by artisan boot makers in, in the United Kingdom. I think that's a wonderful way of looking at your sustainability and, and the way that you buy your products. So let's talk about my Jad Desert Boots. Well, as you can see, this is a pretty standard pair of Jad Desert Boots. They've got two holes, uh, two eyelets for the, the laces. Um, and as you can see, my pair are in a beautiful uh, burgundy color. It's a whole ween leather, chrome XL leather. The reason I chose this is because I've already got a pair of Desert Boots in suede. And I think suede is perhaps the classic Desert Boot material, but I wanted to go perhaps a little bit more upmarket, have a bit more of a flexible boot, so I can wear these with maybe chinos in more uh, formal situations to a degree. And I love the color burgundy. I think it goes beautifully with so many other materials and colors that I wear. So I went for this Horween Chrome XL leather. Now, Horween is a, is a leather tannery which is um, in Chicago in the United States of America. And they're famous for producing this Horween leather, Chrome XL leather. Um, they've been doing so for over a hundred years. The company is in family ownership and they have become, as I say, somewhat experts, internationally renowned for this type of leather. Now, uh, Chrome XL leather is a utilitarian leather. It's very practical, it's very tough. It's created by taking leather and exposing it to a number of different processes. And I believe in the Horween Tannery, that's 89 separate processes over 28 days, in which the leather is heated up and it is impregnated with various oils and waxes, which absorb into the leather and end up creating this very robust, very unique leather. It ages in a certain way. It I would argue becomes more beautiful with the passing of time because it will darken, it will soften, it will scuff, and all of these elements to this leather make it uh, unique and special for you. And the Chrome XL leather is renowned for being tough and hardy. The reason why it's impregnated with these oils and waxes means, you know, that it's repellent to the water, perhaps more so than any other type of leather. Uh, and, you know, it, it is just such a practical leather. And this particular burgundy color, known as the Halloween number eight color, is perhaps most synonymous with the Halloween tannery. And, you know, it's almost like a brand identity when you see that color, 
you know it's made of Horween Chrome XL. Now, of course, at JAD, uh, you can stipulate any number of different materials, different colors. You can uh, stipulate the Horween leather in a number of different finishes, not necessarily the burgundy, if that's not to your taste. I have found uh, the material to be thick, solid, robust. They sent me some swatches of some of the other suedes that they produce their desert boots in, and it is beautifully smooth, tactile, and absolutely robust. I'm sure it's of the absolute finest quality, but very flexible as well, very easy to wear. My own wearing experience uh, was such that these boots needed no um, breaking in whatsoever. Straight out of the box, onto the foot, they were comfortable, wear them all day, no issues, no hot spots, no blisters. That is a rare quality in a pair of boots as well. Um, so I was very delighted at that. And I have found that my wearing experience is that this leather, the color, the boot, it goes with everything. As I said, I've been wearing them with chinos day after day. They look so appropriate. You can wear them with jeans. You can wear them with shorts. The Jad boot has got an, a subtle difference to the classic sort of Clark's ones, which I've previously been wearing. I have found there to be certainly an upgrade in the quality and the finish and the feel of these boots entirely. Um, the thing I like about the, the whole Jad experience, it feels like a personalized experience because there's so much choice. I believe the boots are made in small batches of, of 12 at a time. Um, so, you know, great, great sensation of choosing something quite special that you know you're not gonna find somebody else wearing. Now, I've already told you what the price is, but I just want to reiterate the fact that whilst I think these boots are amazing, they're not particularly expensive. When you consider the Clark's Desert boots, made in a mass production process in Vietnam, thousands of miles away, £130. Um, the standard suede Jad Desert boot is £179. So it's definitely within the orbit. And then as you start to, uh, start to add on, you know, certain specifications that you're looking for, the price will rise, of course it will. Uh, but my boots that I've purchased here, £199, I think I need look no further. I do want to add actually, just in case you're thinking about it, right? I'm not sponsored and I'm not endorsed by Jad whatsoever, right? This is me as somebody who's got a pair of the boots sharing my experiences with you. I have not been paid in any way to tell you about these boots. So I hope you understand this is a genuine independent review. So that is really the end of the review. What more can I say? I think I have found the ultimate desert boot. The, the evolutionary process has taken a step further from where it began with the granddaddy of desert boots, back with Clark's, to today, Jad desert boots. They can surely say they are British through and through, made in Britain by British manufacturers by hand in their factory in Suffolk. Totally British not made anywhere else. Uh, and the end product, superb. I can't say any more. Absolutely love them. And I'm gonna put them on now and walk back to the house. So I hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you have, I'd be delighted if you would give it a thumbs up. Uh, if you'd like to see more videos like this, click the subscribe button, come on the journey. If you'd like to practically support the channel, you can click um, my buy me a coffee link in the show notes below, and that would be very generous of you indeed. Buy me a coffee. So until the next time, wear your own boots with pride and passion, as I always say, and think about the origin of your boots and where you would like to be in the future sustainability, quality. Have pride in the things that you wear. They will make the wearing experience so much more enjoyable. So until the next time, take care, and I will see you again very soon.